morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Church UCC. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Days like this, I always think that they're again turn on the lights. Because <laughs> it's so much darker in here. So I'm glad to see you all, even though we have some rain, and I know that keeps some of our folks away. So, but at least the parking lot's in better condition, right? So, this morning we have a few announcements aside from the ones in your bulletin. Um, on Thursday, we will be having an Encuentros Latinx workshop that is part of our work with ONA. So, that will be strictly on Zoom because our presenter is out of California and I was not about to petition council or the task force to pay for her crap. Even though I, I, I adore my colleague, that would be costly for us for just one evening. So, she's doing it from California, hence why it's on Zoom. Um, as you know, this week will also be a busy week for me as Jacob will have uh, his cancer removed this week. So, I don't know what that'll look like, hence why it's also online. You can still sign up and um, up to the date of, and as soon as you sign up, it should automatically email you a link to the, um, the session. If you do register and it doesn't send you a link for whatever reason, just email me or call Riley and we'll work on getting you that information. I also need uh, for you all to drop me a note, email, don't tell me today, because I'll forget. Uh, if you're available to help set up for our anniversary celebration, I like to set up for Sunday, October the 2nd, I like to set up the altar to have it nicely decorated because we'll be having World Communion Sunday along with the second part of our anniversary celebration and it's also the offering for neighbors in need. So, um, I really wanna decorate our altar for that day so if any of you are available, just drop me a note in my box or an email so that I know who to reach out to closer to that day. There's also pictures in Wabi Hong, one of the tables. Elaine said, you're welcome to take them if you want them. Uh, otherwise, just leave them there and we'll find something to do with them. So, uh, our, well, no, I won't say what I was gonna say, I'll stop there. Because then Elaine will throw a shoe at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let me double check, we don't have anything else. Make sure you read your bulletin as we have several announcements, uh, including that uh, this coming Sunday, for the next two or three Sundays, we'll be having our uh, the Duwanis Baby Shower Drive once again. Uh, last year, we filled up, overfilled two big boxes that they brought, so they were super excited that this year they're bringing three boxes. <laughs> so, at least the volunteers will know what they're getting themselves into, because last year they were not prepared in the vehicles that they came in, so they had to come back. So, that shows how much you all enjoy giving to your community, so props to you all. So keep an eye out for those boxes. Um, I also encourage you to sign up for the fall meeting for the Chicago Metropolitan Association. That's the association we belong to, and we need to be involved. I know typically you've uh, relied on Barb to go in person. As you know, things have changed. Um, that is no longer in person. Um, on when that will change, I don't know, but it continues to be online. So those of you who have time, October the 3rd, uh, I just lost it. October the 3rd, Monday from 6 to 8 p.m., we need, in council, uh, I've also encouraged them, we need at least two lay people to represent our congregation in voting. And it's nothing to where you have to break your head. It's very simple items that are passed. And on top of that, I am a presenter once again. Uh, I was a presenter in the spring. I will be a presenter once again for this fall meeting. And the topic will be unwise and that's to encourage more congregations to take those steps in becoming mental health advocates. So I encourage you to be um, on Zoom. If you don't wanna be a representative, that's okay. At least be present so that you can see what's going on. 
And also later in October, we will also be having our conferences annual meeting. Um, and so I encourage you to sign up for that as well. Um, if money is a factor for the uh, annual meeting, let me know and we will work on that because I don't want to prevent money being an uh, obstacle for you to participate in something because that, uh, the church should not be about that. The church should be about helping everybody who wants to be at the table be at the table. So if you want any more information on that, let me know and I'll get you that information. Also, uh, the flowers uh, today on the altar are in memory of Frida Ross on her birthday, which would have been today. So Barbara put up flowers in honor of her mom. It's not in your bulletin, so I want to make sure that you all knew why we have those flowers up there. And uh, the candle in honor of Amy and Dave Spezzo's wedding, which was on Friday, September the 9th. I'm not sure who put this in here, but someone did. So. Oh, probably Eileen. Huh? Probably Eileen. Probably Eileen. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was like, there's no name. <laughs> I was expecting like a green card from so and so. <laughs> so I want to make sure that uh, we keep our eyes open and we stay awake for the next few weeks. Uh, there will be a lot going on, and I would love for you all to participate. I know you all will be here for our celebration on the first. Uh, we will be having an array of music and uh, an oversight on the musical group that we hired. We end up getting. Um, a bonus because the trio that was supposed to play in here and then in Wabi Hall, they'll have to jet over to another event that they're supposed to be at before seven o'clock that evening. So that means that for the second hour that they were contracted, we'll get mariachis playing. So I figured you still get an array of music. Uh, and so while you're dining in Wabi Hall, you'll be serenaded. Uh, so you can think of yourself being in a fancy restaurant. Uh, minus the servers, because no one's going to serve you unless you stand up in line. <laughs> so you can leave me a tip, though, just that far. <laughs> but um, we will also be having our in-house musicians, uh, Hannah and Leslie. Uh, Hannah will open our celebration at 2 p.m. because she has a prior commitment as well. So we wanted her to honor her presence as being one of our in-house musicians. And then Leslie uh, will close our... Uh, event in here. Uh, we'll also have, as I mentioned before, the dance company uh, move the beat uh, from here in Des Plaines. So they'll have a program for kids. So the kids will dance first and then the adults will dance. We'll also have the notables and Laura will be performing as well. So Ruth, are you joining her? She's in the notables. Okay. I thought she was going to do with you like last time. Either way, as long as you're showing your talent. So, we do have an array of entertainment that day. So I encourage you to bring your friends. I would appreciate that either you call Riley or you send me an email uh, to RSVP because I do want to have an accurate count. I don't want to buy too much food and I also don't want to buy too little food. Um, I'm not Jesus, so I can't make it spread more than what it is. <laughs> so I want to make sure everybody's fed when they come in. Uh, so keep all those things in mind, and we still have a few weeks, so if there are any questions pop up, feel free to reach out to Riley in the office uh, or myself by email. This week, I will probably be working somewhat remote, uh, hence because I'll be with Jacob. So um, keep that in mind. Of course, if a pastor repair emergency comes up, do not hesitate to call me or text me. Um, still available for that. I think that's it. Any other announcements? Oh, thank you, Gary. <laughs> okay, so one very important announcement uh, is before you leave, uh, whether you're a church member or whether you're a regular visitor, please see Gary because he will be giving you a copy of my annual review um, questionnaire. So this is basically a way of the past
Castro Congregation Relations Committee, which is, reminder, it's made of Gary, Elaine, and Laura. They will be taking that information, they will compile it, and they'll uh, review it with me. And this will help set, basically, whether there needs to be improvements that, you know, of the general consensus is, or whether there's some stuff that you all see really well, you know, going to the congregation, stuff like that. So anything you would, similarly to what you would do in the secular world for a review, right? You give props and then you give possible need improvement. So that's what that uh, questionnaire is. If you're a couple, Bud, Elaine, Ruth, Herb, Don, and Judy, you each have to fill out your own. There's no have the wife do it, just FYI. Uh, because this is the individual, I want to hear from each and every one of you. Um, if you want to use one form and put, you know, spouse one, spouse two, that's fine. I think that's acceptable, yes? Uh, but we still want to hear the two separate voices uh, because that is important. You're not one voice, you're two voices, okay? So make sure you get a copy. You will have a few weeks to submit it. But let's face it, if you don't do it soon, you forget about it, so the sooner the better. And then just submit it to Gary, Elaine, or Laura. Uh, if they're not around, you can always drop it in, uh, is there a personnel box? In the personnel box, okay? Um, because they will be the ones to review those once you get them in. Any questions? No? Okay, that's it. A lot of announcements, I told you. Let us pray. Holy One, we know we need each other. We know that we deepen one another to build communities that are whole and healthy. When there are risks and wounds among us or around us, may we be people who show up to work in repair and restoration. For this sacred labor, strengthen our hearts and ground us in your love. This we ask as we enter into silent prayer. Join me to a call of worship printed in your bulletin. If we wander from love's way out of fear or in pursuit of power, if we are turned away from the places we once called home, if we desire to create places of belonging that are just and restorative, if we go looking for what has been missing within us,
Please join me for our prayer of reconciliation printed in your bulletin. Loving Shepherd, pour your grace upon us this day. Seek those who are wandering and lost, for they too need your grace. For you know when we are wandering, and you know when we are lost. You know when we have sinned, and when we have forsaken your call. Forgive us and bring us home. Reclaim us and make us your own. For you are our shepherd, and we are the sheep of your pasture. For this grace and mercy, we are ever grateful. Amen. Let us take a moment to confess our own. Rejoice! God has changed our circumstances for the better. Christ's mercy and grace redeem us and bring us home. We who were lost have been found. Amen. I now invite you to share a sign of peace by waving to everybody. For thus says the Lord, 
The whole land shall be a desolation. Yet I will not make the full end, because of this earth shall mourn, and all the heavens above grow black. For I have spoken, I have purpose. I have not relented, nor I will turn back. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath strengthened me, because he judged me and faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I am formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorant in unbelief, and in the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and the love that our Christ Jesus. The same is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of all ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please stand in body or spirit for our gospel reading according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. For what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Here is our gospel lesson. Let us not place a period where God has placed a God. God is still speaking. You may be seated. I would hope by today we have noticed that our scriptures are usually all tied in the message. And that's part of the lectionary. And if you're not familiar with that or you forgot, the lectionary is broken into three years. Year A, year B, year C. I know you remember. And part of the reason is because we get to travel through the majority of the Bible in those three years. It's also to try to avoid having the same scripture heard again. And it's part of the reason why Kyle has also been pushed to not play the same hymns so close together uh, on a yearly basis because it also is part of the lectionary, right? We enjoy certain hymns and we want to hear them again, but do they always fit into the rest of the message? So, talking about music, here are a few lyrics from one of us by John Osborne that came to mind as I prepared for today's sermon. I want you to keep these words in mind, attached to today's scripture readings. If God had a name, what would it be? And would you call it to his face? Now, I'm trying my best not to go into song even though I don't sing it. And if you were faced with him in all his glory, what would you ask if you had just one question? And yeah, God is great. Yeah, God is good. What if God was one of us? Just a stranger in the bus trying to make his way home. Now, those of you familiar with that song, you're probably going to have it in your head for the rest of the day. Yeah. 
because <clears throat> that's how I was. Even last night when I was reviewing everything, I kept singing it. I'm like, okay, don't sing it in the morning. So unless I get training for my voice, then maybe I'll sing. See, growing up, my parents always told me to be careful who I hung around with. One day, my mom in particular told me, I heard you hang with said person. As we discussed the friend in question, I listened to my mom, what she had to say. Nonetheless, it didn't all sit well being a teenager who saw things differently. And I think we can recognize that, that even in today's world, the younger generation can often see things in a different aspect. And that's what helps us grow as a society. See, the person who had told my mom about my friend was like the Pharisees in today's gospel. They were just keeping tabs on what I was doing or not doing. Unfortunately for that person, I follow the example Jesus sets in today's gospel about welcoming everybody, including the misfit or those who may otherwise belong, not belong, or be included. I was like Jesus in the form when it came down to it. I didn't care what social group belonged to in school or society. In school, I talked to the prophets, so those of you who remember what I was at, to the goth, to the junior ROTC, to the band members, so forth, so on. My mother, like many other parents, was doing her best to try to protect that which she held dear, her children. In turn, I, as one of her children, listened to her when she spoke and tried to guide me. The disciples, too, gathered and attentively listened to Jesus. They were prepared to receive instructions from him. They saw the crowds and continued to follow. They learn from teaching and modeling. And those of you sitting here today, even though your parents are gone, you can still remember some of the things they modeled for you and they taught you. Hence, if you like what they did, you turn around and you tell your kids, this is what you got to do. Today, we must model what is important to us. We know we will not take that shiny sports car or treasure trinket with us when we die. Time and time again, we see that our church universal is divided. <clears throat> we have the label in this country of conservative Christians and liberal Christians. The word echo in those two labels is Christian. Therefore, we are to act as Jesus and welcome all to the table. It's why we call ourselves Christians, is it not? Once again, I ask, what is important to you? Is it your money, your house, your children, your career? The flock God has created is sacred and valuable. When one of the flock is lost or hurt, God mourns or seeks to get them home. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, I think it's fine. Dear loss carries an array of meaning. In today's scripture reading, we've heard loss of one who wanders away. Loss is when someone walks away from their relationship with God. We are way too familiar with that understanding. Loss is when someone is kicked out of the church community for speaking up against injustice. Loss is when the church community does not open its doors to those who are seen as not belonging. See, depending who you talk to may depend on what they have a definition of loss. But God is love 
which means our door should always be open. The Pharisees and the scribes, like today's Christians who keep others away from their toxic theology and misunderstanding of the word, indicate the one who shows hospitality is as bad as the one they welcome. This brings me back to what I disagreed with my parents, particularly my mom, during that conversation. After my mom was done speaking, I turned and looked at her, saying, is it not the example you have shown me? I'm making friends with everyone, as Jesus modeled, and you and Dad have taught me not to judge, but to be welcoming. I will say that I am friends with that said person to this day. Siblings, as Jones sang, what if you did come face to face with God today? Would you recognize God as a stranger on the bus? Would you identify God as a trans person, homeless, or poor person? God is calling us to open the doors. God is great, God is love, and God is welcoming those the way home for lost people. Our job is to welcome all those who don't feel they belong. As their newsletter is titled, The Light Shines, let Christ Church UCC be such a lighthouse. Amen.
today, some of you probably were scratching your head and wondering why Gary uh, got stuck ringing the bell so many times. And by now you know that he's probably doing something I directed him to know. So it's not a shock anymore, it's the first few times. But today, along with our gospel message and being together as one church community, I want us to keep in prayer those family and friends who still mourn the loss of all those who were needlessly murdered on September 11, 2001. Today is the 21st anniversary. Seems so long ago, but there's some in this space that weren't even born then. And we have to keep their spirit alive. We also pray for our church family and friends listed in our bulletin. Whether it's healing that they need of medical form or spirituality, whether it's loneliness or anxiety, we pray for our church community. We pray for those celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week. We pray for Jacob and any others who are undergoing surgery this week. We pray for those who are experiencing anxiety. And we pray for each and every one of you here today. Whether you have voiced your concern or not, know that God knows exactly what is in your heart, what is weighing heavy upon you. Let us implore the Lord our God, praying, pray in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We pray for leaders of the church. May they serve as examples for those who would come to believe in Christ for eternal life. May the church place its hope in you, O God, and not in human wisdom. We pray for our confirmation class that is to launch today. May these children be open to the wisdom that they can inherit, be open to the Spirit whispering to them. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We pray for the leaders of the nations. May they show mercy and advocate, advocate for the rights of the people. May they, like Moses, seek the greater good rather than their own interests. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. We thank you for all you have created. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Rejoice in your creation, telling stories about sheep, praying in the wilderness and walking on the sea. May we also appreciate the works of your hands. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. We pray for the people in our lives. May we learn to love the stiff neck, the sinners, and all those in great need of your mercy. Make us instruments of your peace. And now I'll take a moment so that you can verbalize to God what it is that's waiting on you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. We pray for the sick, the anxious and the sorrowful, make them hear of joy and gladness, that broken bodies and broken spirits may rejoice. Clean in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. We trust to your mercy, O oh God, all who have died. May the rest eternally in your peace. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, our God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We pray through Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, 
and any collective longing for a taste of your kingdom on earth. We rejoice in echoing the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Remember that though we don't pass the offertory plate, it is in the narcos. Friends, we do not have the answers to the world's great pain or even our communities, but we do know this, that loving one another, practicing vulnerability together, and seeking the transforming hand of God heals and restores. In this spirit, let us bring what we have and share it with God and one another. The collection basket is in the narcissist. Those of you on Facebook, you can donate via text or via our website. Let us pray. Pursuer of love, seeker of justice, we bring this gift in gratitude for your relentless commitment to a restored creation. Even when we struggle to grasp the sacred possibilities before us, you remain at work. And so in you we put our trust and offer these gifts to you, praying your will may be done and your kingdom may come. Amen. Though we may leave from here, love goes with us. To the edges of the earth and to the depths of the sea, love would follow us, always searching for connection, always seeking to mend and restore. And the Holy One goes before us, goes within us, and follows after us. Thanks be to God.